Natural and man-made catastrophes, including hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, cyber attacks, terrorism and pandemics, seem to come out of nowhere, but that doesn't mean they can't be predicted and managed. Well, that's where Risk Management Solutions, or RMS, come in. They help insurers, financial markets, corporations and public agencies evaluate the risk of catastrophes happening throughout the world through risk modelling and technology. Well, to find out more, let's meet Karen White, CEO of RMS. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to TBD Media Group's coverage of Davos 2020. Hello, Karen. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. So assessing risk has lots of variables, doesn't it? And now advances in data collection and data processing means that you've got masses of information. So how did that happen for RMS? Yeah, well, RMS has been around for 30 years and we're actually disrupting ourselves right about now. We've been in the risk market and our roots are really natural catastrophe hazards and risk. And all the models that we built are the basis for the property insurance business around the world. And, and the property and casualty market is about $1.6 trillion. So our technology underlies that. Uh, we started out with an earthquake model and now we have over 400 peril models, everything from hurricanes and floods, but also beyond natural catastrophes, we've moved into areas like cyber, terrorism, pandemics, and other kinds of risks because that's what the market is pulling us. What we came to understand is that there are physics of risk that we understand very well and we can apply everything we know about risk from the markets that we've always served to new risk markets as they evolve and that's what we're focused on today. And if we think about the digital transformation of the global risk market, what would you say about that? Yeah, there's a big debate in the industry about whether it's slow and incremental or it's transformative and I would say this, transformations happen when market dynamics are overwhelmingly changing and making it time for disruption, but at the same moment in time, technology is advanced in new ways that it can be applied and can propel that change forward. And I think that's where we are in the global markets. Uh, I remember when there were 50 web servers in the world and the entire global e-commerce market was exactly zero. We have a three and a half trillion dollar global e-commerce market that evolved today in that transformation and market after market that was disrupted from that. I think that we're looking at an industry transformation for global risk that is as compelling and powerful as what we saw in that, that last one, and, and I think we're just on the cusp of it. And what risk market dynamics are you seeing that convince you that things have changed? Well, I can name hundreds. Let's start with climate change, cyber risk. Uh, bank fraud increases. Uh, let's talk about extreme weather and how that's changing. Let's talk about the $135 billion a year of uninsured losses that occur simply from natural catastrophes. Let's talk about business interruption risk, that $21 trillion of the Fortune 500's assets are now intangible and largely uninsured. There's no safety net there and on and on. So I see all these market dynamics pointing to compulsion for disruption. And you have what we call a data lake now. Tell yeah. me about that. Yeah, so data lakes are a technology construct that lots of people have, and ours happens to be a risk data lake. In the past, if you think about it, what we've done a great job doing as a tech industry is we've taken all the world's consumer data and behavioral data, we put it in one place, and we've used the correlations that we found to sell you more stuff and to serve you as a consumer. But what we haven't done is the same thing with risk data, to give ourselves a compelling new view of risk. And if you get all the data in one place that impacts risk and losses, what you can then do is find brand new correlations with machine learning and artificial intelligence that you could not see before. And, and you could create a market like that. There, there's a search platform. There's an e-commerce platform. There's a social media platform. There is not a global risk platform. And there needs to be. And you don't just predict, do you? You can actually have real-time insights that will help during a catastrophe, during a disaster. Yeah, that's evolved. We predict with probabilities and what those losses are going to be so that you can better protect yourselves. So we, we are involved in the risk management life cycle, right? You take on a risk, you price it, you manage it, you transfer it, you create a portfolio of risks, and you have a deep understanding. And we help our customers with their views of all kinds of risk across those 400 
models that we talked about. And then the Holy Grail is really to understand that the past is not the perfect predictor of the future and to use technology to get your arms around future risks that seems far into the distance so that you can plan and mitigate around that as you run your business and your life. And we have to mention the state of the planet. How do you think about climate change now? Yeah, I think about it in, in a couple of ways. One, it, it is the existential risk, the impact on the planet, the ecosystem, but also in the global economy. And those dots are being connected now, and it's beginning to, uh, to show fires in Australia, these extreme weather events, that there are some impacts where climate change is exacerbating the kinds of losses and damages that we're seeing even today. So I'm a pretty practical person. I, I look at it as what's going to happen in 20, 30 and more years, but we also have to look at what's going to happen over the next five. And so what we're very focused on is helping our customers understand a view of risk around climate change, whatever business that they're in, so that they can plan around that here, today, tomorrow, and in the future. And when we spoke earlier, you were saying follow the money, but what yeah. does that mean in connection with risk? Yeah, I think you can do a lot of good by following the money, um, particularly in, in risk areas like climate change that are so enormous around the planet. Look, we, we saw how fragile the world was in the 2008 mortgage crisis, right? This will dwarf that. And, and so I think there's an important role for activism, philanthropy, governments, and, and leadership there. But I also think that without the commercial markets, without following the money, you can't get to where you need to go with risks like climate change. Right now, you see companies moving to a zero carbon footprint because their customers and employees are mandating that they do. You see the announcement recently from BlackRock that they are exiting the fossil fuel investment world because now they're going to put sustainability as one of the criteria for their investments. So, so follow that money, they can have a huge impact in, in what we're doing in climate change. And how challenging do you find it personally to kind of make the downside, the risks, your life's work? Yeah, I could see why you, why you would ask that question, the proverbial, how do you sleep at night with the kinds of things you think about? But I, I don't think of it that way. I'm, I'm incredibly optimistic right now because I see what's possible in this world of risk. And what if we could analyze and better understand the risk across the world, whether it was climate change, extreme weather events, business interruptions, people being, um, being dislocated uh, be because of these risks, uh, mortgage, assets, uh, look across any of them. What if you could gain such a more powerful understanding of those risks that you could actually transform and a new risk market emerges? Why isn't that a trillion dollar opportunity in the world with all the risks that we're looking at? Thanks so much for telling us all about that. It's really interesting. Thanks a lot, Karen. Great. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's all we've got time for at the moment. Uh, from me, Sarah Lockett, covering Davos 2020. It's goodbye and thanks for watching. Thank you.